When charging up a chiller with a flooded evap, some guys are adamant that we that you need to first charge in gas only until the freon temp gets to 32 degrees of saturation and only then charge in liquid phase in order to avoid any risk of freezing the evaporator. What's your take on that, yay or nay? I think that it is a excellent practice and it is worth following, especially if you are not familiar with doing these types of charges. And I even say this applies to flowing water during a recovery or charging phase and charging vapor first and then charging your liquid. These are things to help minimize any risk of freezing because the consequences of something going wrong are ridiculously high, like ridiculously high. Now, sometimes when we gain experience and we begin to reach a more senior level in our industry, we will start to not go by the book as much because we've learned enough. We understand enough. We will take shortcuts. And in many ways, that's what they really are. They're shortcuts. They're a way to get to the same result faster, but we have enough experience and confidence to do that without breaking something. So in the early stages of this, by the book in your situation is flow water, charge vapor first, get above uh, freezing saturation, and then charge liquid, and never stop flowing water. Now, when we start moving beyond that into these shortcuts, which is where seniors, you can get yourself in trouble, don't get me wrong, but this is where the, the, you can gain some efficiency. One, you don't have to, especially if you're flowing water and you've verified flow, like you know that you've got proper GPM, you can just send the liquid because the water flowing, flowing water, moving water does not freeze. At least not to the degree that we're doing. The goal there is just to take a shortcut. The shortcut is we're going to skip the vapor part because I have water flow. Now, you could also flip that the other way around. Instead of having water flow, if you charge vapor first and you get above that 32 degrees of saturation, technically you don't need water flow. Because what will freeze the tubes is the liquid refrigerant below freezing temperatures, not the vapor. And this is also where push-pull is super effective. Push-pull, we are getting the liquid out of the chiller without dropping our saturation temperature. So we're not pushing that liquid into a freezing state while it is making contact with the tubes. So at that point... The water flow is redundant or even some people won't even flow water. They will strictly drain, drain the tubes and clear them out. Make sure they've got as much water out of them as they can. They don't even want to have water in the tubes because they're so cautious about it. Again, they've got their reasons why if they, if, if that's their standard and that is a, that is a by the book way to go about it. But if you're doing push pull, if you're doing it correctly, you won't freeze the tubes because once you get all the liquid out of the machine and you're just doing a vapor pull, that vapor is not going to freeze anything. That's not what causes the tubes to freeze. It's the liquid refrigerant left in the heat exchanger. And if that gets below freezing, that will freeze the tube. Depending on which way you go about this, there are shortcuts. And those shortcuts are what is getting argued about and whether or not those should even be taken in the first place. And that really comes down to your comfort and experience in doing that procedure. And if there is any hesitation whatsoever, follow the book. One of the big things about buy the book answers is that they will typically keep you out of trouble, even though they will be possibly harder and take longer. And the whole point of what makes a senior a senior is being able to know when to apply by the book to be the most efficient and effective and when you can work around it. Does that make sense? Uh, so I am in favor. Do I do that? Depends. Depends on my circumstances.